Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thank you for joining us. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion on strings and introduce our Unicode Aware String Library. CS String Library, Part 2. In the previous video, we discussed string terminology as well as exploring how other libraries handle strings, both in C++ and in other languages. In this video, we're going to be discussing the design of our CS String Library. As we began the design of our String Library, we decided to start with the most widely known string class in C++, which is STD String. It uses 8-bit storage, and we felt that retaining this was of value. The next question we asked is what should we change about STD String? Well, it's missing encoding information. So we need some mechanism to add a way to specify an encoding. CS Basic String is the foundation class to the CS String Library. It's a templated class, and you can pass the encoding and an allocator. The internal design of CS Basic String consists of a sequence of code points, where each code point is represented by a single 32-bit CS care. Since the encoding is provided as a template parameter to CS Basic String, our library provides using declarations for commonly used versions of CS Basic String. In order to design a string library, we needed to take a moment and ask, what is a string? Is it a Kant's character star, or quoted text, or a string literal? In order to define what a string is, let's take a look at a few examples. What data types do you see? In the first example, we have what we consider a C-style string of data type const character star, initialized with a string literal. A string literal is a particular type of expression in the C++ language. And the data type for this string literal, quote ABC, is array of four characters. On the second line, when we initialize str2, which is a CS string, with str1, which is a C style string, this operation is unsafe because str2 has no idea what encoding this C style string may be in. In this second example, since the CS string is being initialized with a string literal directly, we have additional information available to us, and we can add functionality that allows us to detect the compiler's runtime encoding. So how can we detect when a CS string is being initialized with a C style string versus a string literal? The answer is that they are different data types and so they can be matched with two different templates. The first template shown here will match any initialization from a C style string because it will match a character pointer or a const character pointer. The second template will match any instantiation from a string literal because it will match any sized array of const characters. The CS string library has a compiler flag so you can turn off the first constructor because it can be unsafe. We had an API requirement to support string literals. By splitting the constructor into two templates, we allowed code that uses string literals to compile even when unsafe operations are disabled. So one question is, how do we place characters that are not in ASCII into a CS string? And one way is with the Unicode string literals that were added in C++11. The example shown here makes use of a UTF-32 string literal, denoted by the uppercase U before the open quote of the string literal. This string literal is in UTF-32, and its type is array of const care32t. So we can detect this in the type system and support it in a constructor. There are other Unicode string literals that were added in C++11. The UTF-8 string literal, denoted by U8, 
unfortunately has a data type of const character array. This means that it is impossible to tell the difference in the type system between a UTF-8 string literal and a plain string literal. This is an unfortunate feature in the standard, and the standards committee is aware of this, but it may be too late to fix. We will in the future support the UTF-16 string literal, denoted by a lowercase u. If you're using string literals, keep in mind that the C++ standard does not define what happens if you put a non-ASCII character in a string literal. This means that your compiler may interpret this string literal in any way it wishes, and there is no way for the CS string library to tell what your compiler has done. It would be nice if the compiler generated an error in this case. Most compilers will at least generate a warning. The design of CS Basic String uses an STD vector for storage. In the future, we will be adding a small vector for efficiency. The private data member in CS Basic String is named M underscore string. It contains the UTF-8 encoded string. So how do we present the data as a sequence of code points to the user? This chart illustrates how CS Basic String actually works internally. The first line shows four code points. The second line is the vector, which contains the raw data. The third line shows the positions of a CS String iterator as it walks code point by code point. The X and Y shown on the bottom line indicate positions that can never be reached by the CS String iterator because when the CS string iterator is at position 3 and it is incremented, it jumps directly to 4 because it is walking by code points rather than individual storage units. All of the processing required for an encoding is delegated to a policy class like the UTF-8 class. In order to implement another encoding, all that is needed is this one using declaration and three methods. This private method is used internally by the UTF-8 class itself and may not be required depending upon which encoding you're implementing. We're showing the insert method here as an illustration of how concise the implementation of an encoding can be. All this method needs to do is determine whether this code point is going to be represented in one, two, three, or four bytes in a UTF-8 representation, and doing the appropriate bit manipulation as per the values right from the Unicode standard. Included with the source code for CS string is a test folder that contains 12 usage tests containing 85 test points. The output for these tests is all human readable. This is the output for unit test six. It shows how to create a CS string and append and insert various characters. Unit test seven shows we can accurately walk backwards and print code point by code point, even the musical eighth note, which is outside the BMP. Unit test 8 shows that the size and length of a string are handled correctly in terms of the number of code points in that string. And the only method that will show you the underlying storage size is size storage. QString 8 was added to Copper Spice, and in a future release, it will become the default string class. The API for QString 8 will match the functionality available in the current QString class. QString 16 will be added for the cases when a UTF-16 class is really required. As another example of how important string encoding is, during the testing of DoxyPress, we found an issue when trying to document the CS string library. 
we discovered that we were unable to properly represent multibyte characters in our documentation. We traced this to a problem in the Lex parser in DoxyPress. The Lex rules were matching a single byte at a time and mangling multibyte code points. This just underscores how important it is to have a first-class string library that deals with encoding properly and use it consistently in your entire program. You don't need to use copper spice in your application to take advantage of CS string. It is a separate BSD licensed library available from our website. You can add any encodings that your application may require. It supports UTF-8 and UTF-16 out of the box and can be integrated into your code base anywhere you are using a class like STD string. You can find more information about Copper Spice, CS String, and our other libraries on our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions, feel free to email us or leave a message on our Copper Spice form. We'd love to hear from you. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in two weeks for our next video.